I was over the machine and my feet were in there, blindly reaching into space, trying to shut it off. It ground me up for a good 30 seconds on my arm and it, that 2,500 RPM, you're like whoa, grinding, breaking bones, severed my brachial artery, compound fracture my clavicle, my scapula was pulled out of joint. We are in, you know, 18, 20 foot choppy seas. I was servicing a piece of equipment near an exposed drive shaft. It was just a matter of the boat getting knocked at an odd list by a wave and me slipping and I fell right into the drive shaft. I literally had three minutes and I knew it. I kept screaming, I got three minutes, I got three minutes. We clamped with a rag and pliers. But one thing that kept going through my mind was stay present, stay present, stay there, stay in your head. Like if I let go and relinquished myself emotionally and mentally to the other guys around me, that I was gonna die. It was like 17 hours of steaming to get to this lee of the St. Paul Island, which is the Privilov Islands. They get me in a jet and they've got to land for fuel in Sitka. It was like 21 hours by the time I got to the hospital. I actually remember my parents being right there at the door and a doctor came over and he's like, look, he goes, I'm not, just so you know, we're putting you out, we're taking this surgery, we're gonna do the best I can to prepare you for the use of the prosthesis because there's no way I'm gonna save your arm. I live in Capitola, California. It's a little hamlet south of Santa Cruz. I guess I could live anywhere. Why do I choose to live here? Because it's exactly one hour from Mavericks, 15 minutes from Moss, and four hours from Squaw Valley. We call it the Triangle of Fun, or sometimes the Triangle of Fear, depending upon the day. Surfing, it's not the sport I'm best at, but it's become the most important to me because it's the hardest. I love being scared. I love being challenged. I said, especially now with one arm, like surfing big waves with one arm. I, I may only catch two or three waves a year, but it's like the amount of effort and emotion that goes into catching those waves, the release when I do it is immense. For me, it's like the whole picture, like, oh, we're the first time you surf Mavericks, how'd that feel? You know, was that amazing? Did you catch a big wave? I said, no, I got swatted by two. I was really stoked I didn't drown. I was proud of myself for that. But the thing that resonated with me the most was the immensity of it all. I was like looking at the mountains. I was looking at that globe up on the hill. Just the swirling currents and the huge swells rolling underneath you. To me, action sports, it's about the big picture, man. And I get high on that big picture. Talked to Jeff on the phone first, then we hooked up, built a board, and built another board. We've been building them off and on for, I'm guessing, five years. He's done every form of surfing at the highest level. He's paddling with the best of the best, and he's not for me. He's like, let's get out there and kick some butt, guys. You know, what are you waiting for? Let's do it. I had never even paddleboard. I'm like, I saw the Molokai race, and I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to crush it. I showed up for sign up and there's Mark Cunningham, legendary Hawaiian waterman. We hear register, get my number, Jeff Denholm, they go, oh, what team are you on? I'm like, uh, solo, prone. And they're all like, oh, Cunningham's just staring at me. And the other guys are all kind of like nervously shuffling, like, oh yeah, you got a lot of hard kid, good luck. You know, they didn't say it, but it was in their body language. So fast forward to the end of the race, a lot of suffering, like trying to figure out how to make my prosthesis work for hours on end, bleeding and chafing and all this crap. The end of the race, he comes over to me and he says, hey, Jeffrey, he goes, I just want you to know, all those guys wrote you off, but I didn't. He goes, I looked in your eyes, he just smiled and he said, this kid's gonna write a new chapter in the Molokai Crossing. Occasionally, I'm a government contractor. I lease heavy equipment to fight fires. Subsequent to entering that market and starting that business six years ago, uh, I started reading blogs and industry-related news. The U.S. Forest Service was actually sued by their own employees for the use of the toxic flame retardants that they were using. 50 million gallons of a highly toxic chemical was dropped on California alone in 2008. I'm like, 50 million gallons. Really, the impetus behind the idea to try to make a difference was that I work as a brand ambassador for Patagonia. It was actually a friend of mine came to me, he's like, Denholm, he goes, if you want to do something about this, he goes, you work for Patagonia. 
So if you want to start a business, just go talk to them about it. Build an advisory board team of some heavy hitters, go out and raise some money and do it. And I did. We engineered a one-of-a-kind, non-toxic flame retardant that outperforms statistically anything in the market and is completely benign to the environment. The Ghost Rider Rewirement Club is a California public nonprofit that sets out to benefit the Santa Cruz City Junior Lifeguard Program. It's a 14 mile paddle race downwind from Davenport to Santa Cruz at the Santa Cruz Wharf. Yeah, Jeff, he's really focused on building the paddleboarding community, especially the youth. He's, he's out there, even with his hurt back, he's training with us and teaching us that stoke that he brings, that he gives to the community. That's what's really cool, is just how much he gives back to people. If I'm gonna have an impact on people and really inspire people, and I truly believe that this has been my calling to become an inspiration simply by being, you know, who I am, my personality, being strong and carrying myself with dignity despite having a physical handicap that's very obvious. I truly feel, you know, it is my calling. Oh,